Are you looking to build your wealth in 2021 and beyond but just don't know where to start? Well, today I'm going to take you through four fundamental factors that you need to take into consideration in order to do so. How's it going guys? Ryan here and welcome back to another wealth management video and today we're talking about building your wealth and in particular four fundamental factors that you will need to take into consideration when you start your wealth building journey. But before we get into that guys, please remember to like this video, it helps me out so much with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more wealth management, investing and stock market content. And if you do have any advice for any other people watching this video, leave it down in the comments section below. We'd all love to hear from you. And with that guys, let's get straight into the video. If you've never built wealth before, it can be quite a daunting thing, but there are a few key factors that absolutely everyone must take into consideration when starting their wealth management and wealth building journey. And I'm going to share the four of these with you now. The first of which is to eliminate debt. Debt is one of the biggest detriments to building wealth. If you've got debt, that is subtracting from your monetary gains elsewhere, whether that be from investments, whether that be from primary income sources, whether that be from even gifts from other people. If you have debt, it is a big, big issue. So the first thing that you want to focus on doing is eliminating that debt. Some of the biggest causes of debt include home loans, car loans, credit cards, all the basic things that are just ingrained into our society and people take them as normal things. You know, one of the key things you learn throughout your school, throughout your upbringing is, you know, you want to buy your own home and take on all that debt. Now, unfortunately, owning your own home is not all it's cracked up to be if you are under a huge amount of pressure due to the stress of having debt, let alone the financial outlay, not only for the initial capital you need to put in, all the maintenance and all the expenses from your bills, such as you know your water, your electricity, that mortgage that you have in place is a killer. Likewise, the same with a car loan, but even worse, you have purchased a depreciating asset that you owe money on. So the intrinsic value of what you've purchased is decreasing in value, yet over time, you're actually paying more money for it. And as I mentioned before, credit card debt, that is something that can be easily racked up and the interest rates on those credit cards are absolutely insane. And I've seen some up to 20%. All these different types of debt are detracting from the key thing that you need, disposable income. And your disposable income is what you'll be using later in your journey in order to make more money through investing. The typical saying of make your money work for you. Now that is incredibly hard to do when you've got debt, you've got bills to pay, and you've got your general living expenses all combined. So the best thing that you can do is eliminate one of those and often the biggest one, which is that debt. And taking on unnecessary debt is the one thing that you completely need to avoid. If you have a perfectly working car, you don't need a new car. If it's gonna cause you to be in debt, there is absolutely no point in buying a new car unless potentially you know it's for business purposes and you can claim it under the company or tax deduction. But if it's a personal vehicle, for instance, and you're taking on personal debt in order to just acquire a new car because you want it, that is an incredibly poor financial decision. So number one, the key thing you want to do when you're first starting out on your wealth management journey is to eliminate debt. Once you've managed to eliminate as much debt as possible, the next thing that you want to do is build up an emergency fund. Now, what is an emergency fund? Well, effectively, what that is, is a bunch of money that you've put aside, typically four to six months worth of funds that is sitting there in case absolutely anything goes wrong. You know, for instance, if you are in a car accident, if you need emergency surgery, any of those sort of factors that you can't predict are going to occur, 
this money is effectively your safety net so that you don't have everything in other things and you've always got something to fall back on. You constantly hear of situations where people end up losing their jobs and have no money to stand on. Now, effectively, this is due to the fact that they don't have a safety net of an emergency fund because they are literally living paycheck to paycheck. And this is a very unfortunate circumstance for a lot of people, but the key to getting out of that is, as I mentioned before, debt management, eliminating your debt, and then starting to build up your cash funds. I'd like to reiterate the point that your emergency fund should only be four to six months worth of your pay. And the reason for this is because everything exceeding this amount of money can be better used elsewhere. And we're gonna discuss that later in the video, but make sure it's just within that period or you're going to just have a lot of money sitting there, not helping you at all. Now, the third thing that you wanna do, and this is something you can do while you're eliminating your debt, while you're building your safety fund, and that is budgeting. Budgeting is absolutely critical. Understanding what your outgoing expenses are is key. And understanding how much of your income is actually going to things that matter versus what are going to things that don't matter. Your needs and your wants. Now, effectively, what you wanna do is minimize the amount of outgoing cash as much as possible. And if you can, maximize the amount of income that you are receiving. Effectively, what you wanna do is push that ratio of you know, money going out to money coming in. You want the money going down to drop and you want the money coming in to increase. That is quite obvious, but the key to doing this is budgeting. And when you're budgeting, effectively, you want to do a few things. So identify each individual need. So everything that you absolutely must pay every single month, every single week, every single day, whatever they may be. And that may be a bus fare to you know get to your work, it might be your electricity bill, it might be your car insurance, all those sort of things that you need. Now, once you've done that, you wanna identify all the expenses that are outgoing that you don't necessarily need. So, you know, for instance, you might be eating takeout three nights a week instead where you could cook and save that money. You know, you could be going out with friends, all that sort of stuff, which involves outgoing money that doesn't typically need to be an expense. The more you can reduce these wants and these outgoing expenses that aren't your needs, the better position you're going to be financially to eliminate your debt and build that safety fund up. There are absolutely plenty of apps out there that allow you to do this or something like Excel spreadsheets, but Honestly, the easiest way for me is just writing those things down quite simply. Unless you wanna track the data, if you don't have enough money to afford you know, an app or something like that, there are free options out there though, so just take that into consideration. You can just write it down in a book, track your expenses that way. So you've started budgeting, you're managing to reduce your expenses and increase your income. You've eliminated debt or you're in the process of eliminating a large portion of your debt and the key thing is you are building that emergency fund there just in case you have had an issue that has arised and effectively need that money immediately. So you've done all those things. So what comes next? Well, this is the fun part and this is where things start to get exciting and I draw back to the point of saying, make your money work for you. Now, how do you do that? Well, there's a few ways you can do it, but they all fall in investing. So for instance, one way you can do that is superannuation. In Australia, it is a mandatory thing. You must pay superannuation or your employer puts superannuation aside out of your income. Now for a lot of other countries, such as the United States, this is not something that occurs. So if you are in a country where you don't have a superannuation fund or for those who are unaware, it's also known as a retirement fund. Start off with that. Make sure that you're putting money aside for your future. These funds effectively manage your money for you that you're putting in there and you access it when you're of the right age. So, you know, 60, 65 years of old, whatever it may be. 
that money is there for you when you retire so you've got something to fall back on when you're then at that stage of your life where you're likely no longer going to be working. So make sure you get that set up if you're not already in a country which it is mandatory for. Once you start doing that, you can look at a lot cooler things. So, you know, for myself, one of the big things that I'm into is the stock market and stock market investing. And one of the best things about this area is you can do all your research before you even put your money into anything. So make sure you're educating yourself all through this process that you're eliminating your debt, your budgeting, all that good stuff. Make sure you're educating yourself on finance in particular something like stocks because that is where you want to end up and you want to be prepared and the main thing with the stock market is if you do not understand what you're doing it is highly likely you're unfortunately going to lose money especially if you're investing in individual companies that you don't really understand so make sure you do your research when you're getting into things like stocks Alternatively, go down the path of investing in exchange traded funds, also known as ETFs, where it's a conglomerate of effectively shares that have been put together for you and they have a key uh, goal in mind. So whether that be, you know, dividend paying stocks or growth stocks, all those sorts of things. But make sure you do your research. But the stock market is one of the best and easiest ways to start investing because you can buy stocks every single day and you can immediately sell them it's so liquid as an asset purchase and selling potential that it is easy for anyone to get into now the third area of investing you can look into is one that everyone knows about and it's real estate and real estate's a bit harder to get into because obviously you're taking on once again potentially that aspect of debt you want to make sure that you're purchasing an asset a house an apartment, whatever it may be that is going to A, increase in value, but B, pay a good rent that you can cover your expenses with for that property. Now, obviously there's ways around this, you know, negative gearing and that sort of thing. If you are not making as much money as your expenses, that's fine. That's a way using tax in order to effectively turn that around and make it so you're in a better position. But The key thing is to make sure that you are in a good financial position and you've made, once again, an informed and a researched decision on what sort of properties and assets you're willing to buy. Most of the world's millionaires, or a large majority of them, have become millionaires because of property. Keep that in mind. A lot of value exists in property because over time it consistently goes up in value over the long term. Now obviously you've got all these investment types plus many more, but what do you actually do? What one do you choose? Well, do your research, look at them all, then start an investing plan. So what is your strategy? Are you here to have a low risk, low reward strategy? Are you here to have a high risk, high reward strategy? What's your risk profile in general? Are you wanting to invest in something a bit more liquid like stocks or are you wanting to invest in something that is physical such as a home or land or anything like that? Put an investing plan in place and the best thing you can do is learn the individual parts, choose one and then master it, then move on to the next. So for instance, check out superannuation first or uh, retirement funds and learn all about them, put some money into there, then move on to the next one. The one thing you don't want to do is absolutely overload yourself with information, but at the same time, you want to be consistently learning. So make sure you put together an investment plan, investment strategy, write it down so you know exactly what you're doing and you stick to your plan. One of the biggest reasons that I've seen people fail and myself when I personally started investing in the stock market failed was because I didn't stick to my strategy. I kept flip-flopping and as a result, I lost my position of leverage and had I just stuck to my original plan, I would not have lost money. And I'm gonna wrap up today's video there, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something today with regards to building your wealth and wealth management in general. I'd love to hear your feedback or any other advice you might have for other viewers. 
leave it down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more investing, stock market and wealth management content on this channel. And with that, guys, I hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time. Cheers.